Welcome to PCTV, I'm Nazar Ashi. And I'm Jared Kanae. This is our final episode for PCTV in this current series. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a very special episode where we try to answer as many of the viewer questions that we've been sent this season that haven't had time to get to. Yeah, so we've had uh, queries over personalization of your PC, Windows settings, uh, ease of use features. So we'll be covering a bunch of those and you'll see how we do it on the screen. Excellent. So one of the first questions we had here was around uh, your logon icon. So the icon associated with your user account. As you can see at the moment, it's this yellow thing. If we want to change that, we just go to the Windows button, left click on that picture, and we'll see some options come up. Here we can change our picture. Yay. So we click on that, and uh, this... Um, That's a good selection. Where are they from? Are they Windows ones? Yeah, they're just some defaults that Windows puts in there. What if you, you don't want them? Well, you can browse for more pictures here. Uh, if you've saved something off the net or some photographs, then you can use that. Generally, they would be in your My Pictures. I don't have anything in there at the moment, but it's pretty standard. Yep. So at the moment, we'll just change it to one of these uh, default Windows ones, like uh, the soccer ball here. And we just change picture. You can see that that's flicked around. If we click on here, it's there it changed. is. And next time you log on to your computer, that'll, uh, that'll, that's what will come up. That's excellent. Okay. That's pretty simple, pretty easy. Mm. So what's the next thing? We also had questions around uh, the desktop background. Ah, which yours is just a standard black? Yeah, mine's just black at the moment. So if you wanted to change that, uh, you right click anywhere on the desktop and go down to personalize. Yep. So we hit that and we can see there's a bunch of options around uh, how you want your computer to behave. Visually. So they've got themes and they've got contrast and stuff, but if you just wanted to change just the desktop background, then down the bottom in the left, you'll see desktop background. Yeah, so click we click on that. on that. As you can see, I'm in solid colors here at the moment. We can flick that around back to Windows desktop backgrounds. Yep. Again, there's a few preloaded that you can choose from. And once again, you can browse. You can browse, hit here, and find anything on your computer that uh, you wanted to use. Excellent. Now, I saw when you went to Windows Desktop Backgrounds, it also had Picture Slideshow. Was that one of the options at the top? Yeah, that's right. So Pictures library. Right. Yeah, so we can actually go to the library of pictures that are stored there, and this uh, option here will just change it. So it makes like a slideshow. That's right. Right, now this is something that's new to Windows 7. It wasn't available in previous versions of Windows, and I think the reason why they did that is because Apple also offer a picture slideshow for their desktop background, and so Windows is being trying to catch up, I guess. Yeah, they're always catching up with each other. Um, if you have a static picture or a small one, you've also got some options here to uh, make it fit the screen or tile it, etc. Right. So we could... Uh, Let's have a look at the background. Yeah, we'll go back to here and pick something like this leafy one. Save the changes. And if we look at the desktop, we can see that that's, Oh, isn't that beautiful? It's lovely. <laughs> that's beautiful. Right. Excellent. So yeah, in that area, there's obviously a lot of other things with themes. If you've set up um, bits and pieces in a personalized way, you can just save that theme and uh, it becomes part of your Windows. Oh, so you can actually customize your own theme and give it its own name? That's right. Excellent. And there's some preset ones here. So if we went to Landscapes, for example, it changes the background and sounds and uh, various other things. Excellent. Okay. Cool. Right. Oh. Yeah, that's because we changed. Lovely. Uh, another question we have is around screen resolution. Ah. So this is if you prefer the text and so forth to be a little larger mm -hmm. on your machine. In the past, you used to have to change the whole resolution of Windows. Um, and we can show you how to do that by right clicking on the desktop and going to screen resolution. Yep. But these days your monitor will have a recommended setting, so it's a native setting. You tend to want to leave it there. Yeah. And then maybe pick this option here, make text and other items larger or smaller. Right. So you can see here, we've got our 100%, which is default. Yep. We can make things larger and larger again. And when we hit apply, it will want us to log off and log back on. Uh, and we'll see that the, the text has increased, the icons have increased in size. But the resolution but stays the, the same. The resolution stays the same. That's an excellent feature. So, that's pretty good. Okay. 
Let me add some questions around Windows settings. Yep. Uh, we thought we'd mention the search bar in uh, the Windows prompt now. Yep. So using the search bar. Yeah, the search bar here, which will take us. Uh, Straight away, if you wanted to type, let's say text size, because we just looked for it, and you didn't know the steps to get to text size, then you type in text size, and it's very intuitive. It'll take you straight there, and that will get you to the spot you wanted to get to if you didn't know the actual steps beforehand. Very useful. Tends to find most of the Windows features. Excellent. Another thing we've been asked about is troubleshooters within uh, how to fix problems, you know, that happen if you install new software or hardware and it doesn't work correctly. Or if you add an audio device or a camera or a printer or something like that and it's got its own drivers that may not be compatible with Windows 7, mm. then your troubleshooter is your first port of call and how do we get there? Well, the easiest way is to go back to the action center, the little flag. Down the bottom in the taskbar. Right, we can open that up and it'll show us some issues if there's any existing with your machine. We'll ignore these at the moment. Down the bottom you see troubleshooting to find and fix problems, so we'll click on that. We can go in there and it gives us a bunch of categories of, uh, related to the computer that uh, will uh, help us tweak it. Now I see that some of those categories have got a little shield next to it. What does that mean? The little shield indicates that to use that function or to change any of those settings in that category, you'll have to be administrator. Right. So by default, Windows 7 restricts administrator privileges. Yep. And uh, if you click on one of these, you'll see that it'll ask you if you want to uh, make changes to this computer. I see. So we don't have any problems with anything at the moment. Run maintenance tasks. Let's click on that for a second. Okay, we can go through here. It's a wizard. It'll look for uh, issues. And as you can see, here's your trouble. Uh, shooting as administrator, that's the shield, so we'll click on that. And it'll go through the computer and look for any issues that exist. Excellent. That's a good thing. And so this will be the place that you come to if you find that your printer you just bought and plugged in isn't working, or your camera that you just bought isn't plugged in or working. And um, it will hopefully be able to solve some of those issues. That's right. So very useful there. Very useful. Now, another one that we were asked all the time is to change um, the default folder locations. Now, what that means is because whenever you have a new computer, most of them, they come with two drives. The first drive being your C drive, and the second one being usually a data drive. Now, the C drive has got all of your installation programs and everything that makes your computer operating system run. And that's usually a much smaller drive than your uh, data drive. In this instance, he's got data E. Right now that's a much, much larger drive and you'd want to be saving all your documents and pictures and all that sort of stuff into that larger drive because then you won't run out of room and your C drive should be reserved mainly for operating system and programs that when you install them. So to do that, you can go to your My Documents folder, yep. which always exists, yep. and this redirects to some other form of storage, like you're saying. Yep. So if you select your My Documents and hit the Organize and Properties, you can see that there is a tab that uh, leads you to the location. Right. So rather than the default on your C drive, you can then uh, move this to any other path. So it would be, in this case, E docs. The One of the most useful things about this is it separates your personalized information from the Windows operating system. Right, so if the operating system were to stuff up or you were to break it or something, you had to reinstall it, you won't lose all your folders and, and personal um, documents, That's pictures, right. movies, everything like that, music. Yep. Move them all in there. I think there's another way you can do it is if you click on documents at the top, not my documents, but actually documents, you'll see it says at the top includes three locations, right? And so if you click on that, it tells you where they are. Yeah. So you can see usually your uh, default will be C, users, your name, etc. And uh, we've already moved the My Documents to the E drive. Because it's a much larger drive. That's right. And it's just another safety consideration mm -hmm. in order to maintain your files. Usually in Windows 7 as well, if you want to know any more about this stuff, there tends to be links um, in any of these screens. So 
you know, this will tell you how, they call them libraries. Yeah. Uh, this is how my docs and my pictures and all that sort of stuff work. And that's new to Windows 7, calling them libraries. And also giving you the uh, ability to change them over is something that's new to Windows 7 as well. That's right. Cool, that background's nice. Yeah, we're obviously in the shuffle theme, so Ah, it's, right, it's so it keeps around. on shuffling them around. That's right. It's interesting. Um, a couple of safety measures. We've been asked about uh, system repair disks. Ah, how do we make a system repair disk? Okay, so system repair disk, let's use our uh, run command again. Yeah, the quick find. System repair disk. There it is at the top. Go back. Yeah, well, there it is. It's found in the document. All right, go there. And write system repair and it'll come up before you write disk. They keep going, you'll see yeah. it. So we have a system repair disk here. Yep, click on that. Okay, what this wants to do is create it on a CD or DVD. Yep. Uh, and you simply let Windows do what it wants. You put, if you have a writable CD-ROM or um, DVD player, you put a blank disk in there and simply hit create disk. This means that if Windows breaks at any time, you can um, recover Windows from that external disk. That's right, if your C drive was to fail, using a system repair disk, what you could do is you replace the C drive. Uh, when you open up Windows, it'll say, do you want to configure, do you want to install, or do you want to restore? Now you click, you want to restore, and then you put the disk that you created in earlier into the computer, it will read that, it will take its settings and all of the um, other bits and pieces that it records and you'll be able to get your system back up and running exactly how it was. That's right. Yeah, that's used in conjunction with the system image, yes? Yeah, it's a, effectively the same thing. Yeah. Except that you're um, not backing it up internally, you're putting it on a removable media. Another useful one is a password reset disk. Ah, now if you've got an old USB flash drive that's really, really small, let's say it's only 256 megs or something small like that, that's useless in terms of recording data nowadays, but it's very, very good if you want to make a password recovery disk because it doesn't take that much room. That's right. So again, we'll use our search here and we'll type in password reset disk. There and it is at the top. Comes up, click on that. And this is the forgotten password wizard. Yep. So basically it helps you in case you've forgotten how to get into your computer. Or if you've thrown away wherever you wrote it down, or if you just simply can't remember where you wrote it down, then this is invaluable. So yeah, we've got a USB drive plugged in here, so we could just do it there, hit next, and then we want to type in our current password and yep. it stores it in an encrypted way yep. on that uh, removable media. That's excellent. And there's so many times that we get asked, how do I recover my password? And if you haven't done that, then it is very, very difficult to recover a password that you've forgotten. It is difficult. It's possible, but again, by its nature, it should be difficult. Yeah. So, uh, what else do we have here? Oh, of course, the taskbar. So the taskbar is this bottom area that's got our programs. Yep. Now, when you launch a program, it appears in the taskbar, but if you use them often, you may want them to stay there as buttons that you can press. Right, right, right. So the way you do that is called pinning it. You yep. pin it to the taskbar. So I've got Notepad here, and that's pinned to the taskbar. I've got Internet Explorer pinned. Unpin the Notepad and then repin it so we can see how it's done. Okay, so we right click on it, and we can see this first option unpin from the taskbar. See how it disappears? Yep. There it is up there. So we can start Notepad again. Now, can't you just click and drag that directly from the start bar to your taskbar? You can, but it sometimes removes it. So we can go here and say pin. Yep. And then that's the same option. So again. All right, now let's say you want to change the order of how you've pinned that. Okay. You just simply hold down, left mouse button, and move them around. And then they'll stay where you put them. That's very convenient. I like that. It's pretty good. Excellent. Uh, and then we've also got uh, a feature in Windows 7 they call Jump Lists. Yep. Which is effectively a list of your recent documents. Ah, so if you, you right-click, let's say, Internet Explorer, 
right. Then that'll take you to where you've been. Where you've been. So, or um, documents or any of them. Chrome here. Chrome. You see, yeah. we can see our most visited sites. These are ones that we, we went to. If they were notepad documents, we've got notepad and so forth. That's very useful if you don't want to retype in everything. Like let's say you went to a website somewhere, you don't want to retype that in, you just right click on Google or, or Chrome in this instance or Internet Explorer and just select the one that was most recently used that you want to go to. That's right. Yeah. Very useful jump lists. Yeah. It's a Windows 7 new feature that's only been available in Windows 7. That's right. Makes sense. Just a bit quicker. Yeah. Another seemingly obvious question uh, that we get asked a lot is what happened to the show desktop icon? Ah, that's right, because in Vista and other previous versions of Windows, they used to have a little icon down the bottom in your taskbar, which actually had show desktop. Yeah, it was down the bottom left. Well, what they've done now is just simply moved it to the bottom right. Ah, so down the bottom. So that here. little bar that seems to be all on its own is actually show desktop and as you can see when you hover over it, it says show desktop. So if we opened up a bunch of things and then we clicked show desktop and just put them all down. Ah, which reminds me, let's say you had a bunch of windows open and you wanted to um, focus on a single one. Well, yeah, there's a, a feature in um, Aero now that's called the shake. Yep. So you would take your the window that you want to be the only one and you give it a little shake. Oh, and everything else disappears. And everything else disappears. That's beautiful. It's not bad. <laughs> I like that. All right. Uh, we also have, oh, snap to. Ah. Right, so if you are comparing documents, for example, yep. you can use the snap features. So, so let's open Notepad again. So we've got a free roving Notepad window here. Yep. If we wanted to full screen it, I could grab the top of the left mouse button and drag it to the top and that makes it full screen. Right. If I wanted to snap it to the side, I would grab this and go to the left. Uh, and it only takes up half the screen. That's right. So that allows you to, let's say, open another notepad. Another notepad document. And you can snap code. that to the right. And we can snap it here. And there you go. And we've got a nice comparison going. Now, you can actually drag and drop fi files and folders across those windows to from one to the other. So that's a very useful feature if you don't want to copy and paste. You just want to drag and drop. That's right. So if we opened Windows Explorer, a couple of these, and drag them to the left and right, we could go find a file uh, anywhere like this text. Yep. And we could open up a different volume over here and we just simply drag it across. That's so quick and easy. I like that feature. Yeah. So that's good if you're manually doing some backups or you want to move stuff. Just a much quicker and more convenient way of doing things. That's right. Um, one other we've been asked about is favourites. Ah, your favourites. So, if we open Internet Explorer, this is for Internet favourites. Yeah. So, you can see I have a couple here. This is called the favourites bar. Yeah. And uh, we can add a favourite at any time by hitting this star button. Ah, see, here. now that star is a replacement. It used to actually say the word favourites, but they've gone more diagrammatical, I suppose, in Windows 7, and they've just gone to little icons, and the icon for favourite is that star. Yeah. So if you go to a site you like, uh, so we'll just say we'll go to some news here. Let's go to news.com. Yep. And if we want that in our favorites list, we can hit our star here and go add, add to, to favorites. favorites. And we're told that we can add that. We can rename it if we want. Yep. And go add. And now that would be in your favorites. Now it's in our favorites ah. list. Right? And I think you can change the order of your favorites as well. Yeah, you can. You can organize them. Um, by dragging them around. Yep. Okay. The other, with the favorites bar, if you wanted to appear it up here, you just hit this little star and arrow over here. Add to favorites bar. So add that, and you can see that news.com appears. So if we then closed, opened a new session, it's in there. frequent, we can go straight to news. Once again, just a way to make it a little bit more convenient, a little bit quicker, a little bit easier for you to get around and get to the places you wanted to get to faster. Yeah. Excellent.
Okay, well that sort of covers it for our um, easy that covers features. That covers the bulk of the questions that we've been asked throughout the season that we haven't had time to get to because we've been doing other segments. So we hope that we managed to cover some of the questions that you've sent us and hopefully we can answer some more in the next season. So that brings us to the end of our very special viewer questions episode on PCTV, our final episode for this current series. And we hope that you've enjoyed watching it as much as we've enjoyed presenting it to you. Once again, if you have any further questions or queries or inquiries that you may want us to look at, then please get in touch with us through our YouTube page or our Facebook page, which you should also like as well. Yeah, definitely like us. Thanks very much for your time and uh, stay tuned also for maybe a few bloopers out of our gag reel. Ah, the gag reel. Yes, you can watch that if you like. Um, of course, I won't be watching that because it's a little <laughs> bit embarrassing, but it is very funny. Yeah, it was good fun to make it. Yeah, catch us on our YouTube page. Hi, and welcome back to PCTV. So first we're going to look at some acronyms that are com... Uh, com <laughs> so there are just a couple of useful ones, that's uh, about all that we'll cover today in Indispensables, but there's lots more, aren't there? There are many, many more, and what we will do is we'll put up a list of a hundred of the most commonly used keyboard shortcuts onto our YouTube channel, <laughs> and <laughs> maybe we should do that again. <laughs> so, You're going to do a welcome back to PC TV. So let me know what you're ready, and we'll... In this segment. Okay, stand by and we'll start recording on one. Five, four, three, two. On this segment of PCTV, we're going to talk about step back. Oh. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay. I was, we'll myself, I was thinking to myself, there's a plane. There's a plane. <laughs> Thanks for watching Facebook TV. Facebook TV. <laughs> Another third party website, and it was called myusa.com. And what that does is it gives you. Bless you. Sorry. <laughs> I can't believe I sneezed. <laughs> Stop. You're